Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally back. So, right now on the screen, right now, we have QS family up against Pixis. That's going to be our first string of there. Obviously, it's also the first semi-finals. Very excited for it. Uh, we saw QS family come up against IGP Girl as well. Well, uh, no, not an IGP go, but NYC team as well as GS. And here we are at the semi finals. I think they had 2 1 journey against NYC team and then they managed to defeat uh, GS 2 0. In fact, all of our streams yesterday, our stream games yesterday on the English stream was actually 2 0, so that was a uh, pretty clear cut. I think the only game that was really close to having a replay was actually Flamingo against Black Cats where in the second game it was really close you know Flamingo always came back but now we're gonna see what QS family have against our Pixies this is the f first time that I've been watching Pixies play I went, went back to watch a couple of the stream games as well so it should be pretty interesting so it looks like we're gonna see Pixies take a little while to Go for the bands. And I don't think we'll, we'll stray too far from what we saw yesterday. Obviously, you know, uh, yesterday we saw a lot of uh, similar bands and picks as well. And wow, okay, so straight up they're, they're going to be banning the Trixies. Uh, not Trixies, but Crixies. So I wouldn't be too surprised at that. Uh, we saw how well we can play as well. Crixie is just such a strong support. And QS family has to be very sure about this one. They'll bet on the Fennec. So Fennec is one of the heroes we saw yesterday about how strong you know the burst can be put on the table. You see it uh Zik and a man out as well. So pretty similar across the board, you know, Quick Six Ban. Uh we also do a see a Zig Ban. I guess I gotta admit it's uh, pretty surprising for me to see a various band straight off the bat like as a first band, but I can kind of understand it as well. We saw a couple of strong performances coming up from QS family. Uh, the one that really comes back to my mind is uh, both Mini as well as Yumi. Uh, both of them played really well today. Uh, left over the point, I think Bottom's a really good pick, you know, you got a Murad and Violet as well. Uh, both the Murad and Violet are really good picks because you immediately review uh, your damage here. And uh, I like the draft coming up on QS family at this point in time a little bit more because the Alistair is there to kind of deal with the Murad with his ultimate. You know, the moment he tries to come in with his ultimate, you can kind of just use a uh, magic prison, trap him down, and then they can actually just blow him up, uh, either using the Matrix of Wool or Magic Barrier. Uh, but pretty much, he's just there to contain the Murad every time he tries to come in. And the good thing about uh, having the Krikna get picked up as well is that the Krikna is there to deal with the Violet. Someone that can dive to the back line, try to get the Violet, and in response to that, I think... Pixis did a really good job of trying to bait those two heroes out. Because what we're seeing right now is a Ras getting picked up. So Ras is there to kind of just babysit a Violet. He can kind of initiate for the team as well. You know, just flash in, uh, try to put someone, try to push someone into the back line, try to do a little burst damage. He can pick up the Alistair as well if he wants to. Uh, maybe push the Kraken away when he's trying to jump in for the Violet. So those are, are the kind of like, you know, chemistry between these teams. The, how I see unfold is if Pixis can get the Violet up to scratch as fast as possible then yes it looks like a really strong draft but in the meantime i still kind of favor qs family's draft we're gonna see the joker as well as the omen getting uh banned out i don't think we'll see victor banned out uh there's a lot more heroes that i feel is a lot suitable in terms of banning uh at this point of time they have to ban a really good tank so maybe an arum i think arum should do pretty well against the draft uh, of uh, QS family, so they should try to ban out an Arum. Uh, reason being, an Arum, or maybe an Alice. I, I, I totally forget about Alice as well. So, the reason why both Alice and Arum both are really good to ban out, both heroes have really good CCs, and at the same time, 
uh, are not that easy to deal with. I mean, Alice will be a more backseat uh, hero. You know, you just drop your sunshine, so your, your friendship. And this does help your team a lot in those fights. You can see, you know, having an Alice uh, be getting banned out is really vital because whatever mage they're going to pick up on the side of Pixis is going to be amplified using uh, Alice ulti. But I'm pretty surprised they banned out the Alice. I think they could have picked up the Alice for themselves. You know, if they actually picked up uh, both the Alistair and Alice, that is the combo that Flamingo went for yesterday, which we saw so potent in every single one of those matches. Like, you know, you just drop... Uh, Alistair's ulti, and then Alistair drops uh, both uh, the magic wool, and it hurts so bad. But looks like we're gonna see Alice get taken out. We're gonna see a Q Groff getting picked up by the side of Pixies as well. I gotta admit, Q Groff, it's a little bit out of meta. Uh, at this current point in time, I wouldn't have expected a Q Groff to get picked up, uh, but we'll see how he kinda. Sustains. I mean, he's there, for some sort of like a warrior, hyper carry towards the late game, you know, decent, a uh, lot of damage, but very low mobility. That's something that I'm very concerned with. Like, they have the Murat, Violent, and Rust, which are very mobile, but the Q Groff isn't. So, when the Q Groff commits to a fight, they have to commit. There's not really much disengage a Q Groff really have uh, in this current meta when all of the heroes are really, really mobile. And in response to that, we're gonna see QS family pick up both the Hayate and Arthur. I like this Arthur pick. Uh, I gotta admit, the Arthur pick is something that I did not expect coming out from yesterday, but today I'm fully prepared for it. Arthur's really good. You know, you can kind of shut down the Rust, you can shut down the Kugov as well. As long as you can CC the Kugov, right? It doesn't matter whether or not he has his ultimate and lifesteal. As long as they can shut down the Kugov before he gets to heal up any of the burst damage that they have in both the Kricknung and the Elisir, I think they should be pretty good. Alright, so looks like we're going to have the Annette, uh, Annette getting locked in. We saw a lot of Annette bends yesterday, but today we will see an Annette getting played out. I mean, what's not to love for her? You know, if both... The Gust Force and Cuff Winds are pre-punishing uh, spells. On top of it, you also have a Hurricane Wall, a decent CC, does provide uh, movement speed as well as attack speed. So it kind of scales up with the Q Groff. So what I see them trying to do is turn this uh, Q Groff into some sort of a hyper carry. And what this is, this should be pretty good. I, I mean, if the Q Groff cannot work. Uh, it doesn't work out as well they still have the violet as a backup so that's where i see uh the side of violet trying to make things work or rather the side of pixies uh trying to make things work with the violet uh both the violet and kilgroff So it looks like we're gonna see this matchup. Our first semi finals of the day, ladies and gentlemen. For those who are turning in, you are watching the FSL circuit, and this is Arena of Valor. This is the Vietnamese qualifiers. And I gotta say, I'm excited as the first two semi finals will clash hits. Remember to mention in the chat who you're voting for. My bet in this. Draft has to go to QS family. I mean, the Alistair as well as the Krigna combo to kind of counter both the Violet and Murad. I really like that. But this is the first time that we're going to see Murad getting played out. So I'm I'm also pretty half off here. It's quite a tough choice. But I, I my gut tells me QS family should have this game one. So obviously we can see a little bit of a technical break. I want to make sure that everything is sorted out before our game goes on. And 
And remember, if you want to find out more about uh, FSL Circuit and how you can be part of it as well, I'm not sure if uh, registrations are still up. Uh, there is. You can follow us on our social media to actually find out more, both Facebook and YouTube. We also got Instagram. Uh, but for those who are wondering, uh, there will be four titles this year. That's going to be Mobile Legends and AOV for the mobile titles. And then we also have Dota 2 as well, League of Legends as our PC titles. And it will be two FSL circuits uh, in the whole of 2020. The first one will run from January to June. Or the second one will run in the later half of the year. So after all the region tournaments, it will lead up to the uh, FSL Elite. It's gonna be an offline competition happening in Singapore from the 5th to 6th March and obviously you know the top 4 teams from Vietnam, Taiwan, Thailand uh, as well as the combined regions will fight for the title but looks like we got our game finally underway Looks like we're gonna see a contest right here the Murad still being able to secure his buff A little bit of a trading back and forth, but it looks like we see QS family really wanting to go for this contest. Obviously, they do have the bottom as well, so they can kind of push the golems out of position, kind of reset the golems if they want to. But that's going to be a really aggressive position coming on QS family, and it looks like they might want to go for it. Goes for the wall stomp as well. So we were not seeing much, I mean in the top lane, you, you do have the crew growth as well as the Arta going head to head uh, We shouldn't be seeing too much from either of them uh, Not too, but either the Murag is level 4 and oh a contest coming in from the bottom Can he get the stun though? That's gonna be the first blood, the quick down comes in just in time And that doesn't matter whoever gets that bar of course We just saw the quick down come in, how important it is to have your level 4 and you may doing a really good job early game to actually just go in, disrupt the flow of the Murat, kind of contest for the might buff, and because of that, it allowed and they bought enough time for the Krikna to get level 4 first. They got the Abyssal Dragon, but here it comes in the Rust with the push. They get the Q onto the Krikna. And they want more, but here comes Alistair with the prison. He's gonna trap the Rust there, but it gets out just in time. Has the support of the net as well. And the Murad, this is where everything played out. He tried to go for his Mike Golem, but was kind of just stopped. And Raz once again with another pickup down the mid. Just to do with the Alistair. There's the Wild Prison coming up. They will get one more Q through the bottom onto the Raz. And these two teams going head to head. Nothing too much, I would say, between both of these sides. We're seeing pretty fair treats throughout the entirety of the map. I mean, the Violet ha 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 has is still having a really quiet uh, early game. I mean, that is pretty much expected. I'm waiting to see, you know, the Murad drop the Temporal Tabulance. That's gonna be the first ultimate that we might see coming up for the Murad. And it could be game changing. Ras getting spotted by three members of QS family. It looked like that Q Groff. We might see our first team fight coming in right now, bottom putting Ras out of position. But both sides not really wanting to commit to a team fight here. It looks like they will back off to their respective lanes. Mr. Dragon gonna be up in 7 seconds. Here comes the Murad Temporal Turbulence getting pulled out. Nope, not yet. The 
There we go, the Alistair getting spotted out by both the Murad. They want to contest for this Abyssal Dragon, but Pix is doing a really good job at securing that objective. And that is going to bring things even now. Both teams pretty much around the 10k mark. And the prison will be laid out. This spell doesn't catch anyone out, but it doesn't matter. Alistair out here at the back, but Raz goes in. Does manage to remove Alistair from the back line. And the bottom comes in a wild storm as well. But Murad will join the fray. Gets the kill onto the Krik now. And here comes the ultimate. But it drops down the temporal turbulence. And they will pick up two kills. Or maybe just one. But they want to really combat for this Alistair. Will he go down for a second time? No, he won't. Takes too many shots on the tower. And they can kind of now re engage. Magic Bull will come up, but Raz just completely blowing up that Alistair on the back line. Kredite might go down for the second time in a row as well. They might just find the Arthur. Kyugra really wants this one, and Kito, she's on the run, but doesn't make out just in time. That bottom's gonna throw the, the Kyugra right at the tower for the second time. And finally, we will see is forcing that fight in their favor they get a 1k goal lead and on top of that they will pick up that first middle tower in the middle of the map up against Kira's family I mean that Raz just making so many plays onto the background she jumped in you know kind of just took out the Alistair and with the Alistair gone they don't have a lot of that AoE damage that I spoke about and during the drafting phase and I gotta say, consider me really intrigued. I mean, they did have both the Kriknak and the Alistair to kind of deal with the Murad as well as the Violet. And I still stand by my statement. I think that is the key factor for KOS from the human if they can get the Alistair to actually control the Murad. But the question is, who's gonna do with the Rush? Because that Rush was picked up instantly after both the Kriknak and the Murad, uh, or rather, after both the Alistair as well as the Krikna was picked up. So that is the question that QS family have to deal with is how are they going to protect this Alistair? Because at this point in time, the bottom cannot do anything about this Ross. He just jumps to the back line, you know, blows up the Alistair and suddenly it's a 4v5 situation for QS family. A blue team tower has been destroyed. But now as it stands, Pixis Kinda leading the momentum of the battle through the last LC playing a really insane game right now. It looks like Lang might be in a little bit of trouble. There we go, the Alistair the LT comes up, traps him right underneath. Liang Shi will get punished right beneath that tier 1 tower in the top lane. And Kito doesn't really have his ultimate, so if the Raz just dives into the back line of the Alistair. I think that might be a little bit of trouble for Tumia. Yumi trying to buy a little bit of space, but Ross will catch out the Alistair. That's a good catch out. But here comes the ultimate. Can he buy enough time? No, he can't. Here comes the knockup. One, two punch. And down goes the Alistair. And here are the rest of Pixis to back up their Russ. Good setup coming up for LC as well. Just hiding in the brush. He kind of anticipated the Alistair's rotation there. And that was really good. Because of that fight, they will get the Abyssal Dragon. And now he'll push Yubi back. That's the burst coming through. And they will pick up the bottom. Pixis. Running a little bit out of control right now. They want to go for more. But not they're not being too greedy. Objective the name of the game. Meanwhile, top lane, Kugroff up against the wall. We two Arthur will join. Kraken comes in as well. Can he sustain his way out of this one? Pulls them back down under his tyrant. He's finding a really long one. The sustain coming through. And can he pick up the Arthur through the last shot? Yes, he can. And Kraken, there's no way you can save your teammate for that one. They do manage to pick up the Kugroff and the top tower, but they do lose the Arthur for it. So not too bad there. A red team tower has been destroyed. Yeah. 
Violet managed to pick up the sanctity. tea. But pretty much still needs quite a few more minutes, maybe uh, about 5 minutes or so before we'll see her start to scale out uh, that uh, farming phase. Ross knocking onto the quick knock. And we're gonna see another pause come out. So up at this point in time, 9 minutes in, we're gonna see Pixis kind of really leading by 2k gold mark. And obviously, uh, and obviously Elsie making all the plays, she's been catching out the Alistair, you know, making sure it isn't easy for the quick to go for the back line. Meanwhile, Pixis looking to lay a bit of pressure down the bottom lane. LC once again finding the quick knock. He has a little bit of a kick and he gets the kill. Not only that, he will snatch the stage buff and he will go for more right now. They go right onto the Alistair, blows him right up. The Arthur tries to delay a little bit of time, doesn't really have too much support from the back line. Kugov kind of dealing with the bottom. All of them, it's a really messy fight for Pixis, but they will be proud of that. But now Quick now comes back in for the second fight. Raz always staying his stay, and they will get a double kill onto the Violet as well. But here comes Murad. Does he have his ultimate on standby? Yes, he does. But not really fancying this fight. Oh, a little bit greedy play coming Quick now. Nearly finding Liang, but she's just dove a little bit too far. A blue team tower has been destroyed. Arthur now coming in the top lane. A blue team tower has been destroyed. They will secure more objectives. Arthur kind of spots out uh, Pixies going for the Dark Slayer. And in one mid lane, we're going to see a little bit of a Rotation coming up for Pixis. I think they might just want to secure that Abyssal Dragon for themselves. They know they cannot go for uh, the Dark Slayer at this point in time. You see a Slick Steam coming up. Okay, oh, what do we have here? QoS family, that is a signal. They know the Abyssal Dragon was taken and they will settle for the Dark Slayer. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Mini trying to hold up the bottom lane all by herself. Kilgrove and Rush, she knows the danger of the Rush. We have a seen how LC can be so potent destroyed. in terms of catching someone out. Han being very aggressive as well, staying right in front. Can do a little bit of damage to the uh, tornado. They will summon the drag down the middle lane. And looks like Pixies want to take out the Drake even before it gets out of the base. They want to hold the Drake there, you know. And they do have the violent spell to damage to do it. So what will QoS do? Will they just watch the Drake go down? The Pro Turbulence being laid down there just now. It looks like with the Drake out of the way, QoS family no longer have the mid shoe. The Pixies can start going to work now, slowly pushing the bottom lane, but Liang getting prison once again. Oh no, nearly goes down, but gets out just in time, and the Astro Magic moves being laid in position. And for a moment, Run nearly went down as well. She will up against, and the Kugor sustain will pull through. Now going down really quickly. I mean, both heroes at this point in time have a lot of damage and pretty much uh, make the build for both sides. So it looks like Kugor and Kugor can kind of go for one more item. Uh, for both of these players, Ra's gonna be stealing away the Sage Golem, try to save that 
But that, but that doesn't matter though. They're stockpiling onto the rush. They will get Elsie. Just caught in a really bad position right there. By coming up as well, Liang will secure the Abyssal Dragon for her team. For well, Yumi just dropping really low. Look at how quickly Bin Bin Mary has so much damage on that Violet, and she's starting to come true. A blue Kugna team drops tower a half has HP. been destroyed. But with that, the Kugroth will have the space needed to pick up the second tier tower in the top lane. Arta with the ultimate, but is it enough? Kito dropping a quarter of HP. The knockback comes out for the Rust, and they will pick him up. And now they want to go to the Alistair as well. Kugroth and the front line sticking so much damage for the team. And once again, the Alistair with the ultimate to lock down the Murad, but that's just not enough damage to bring him down. We've seen this so many times now, and the Krik now will find the space to bring down the Violet. And will that be a trade? Annette in a lot of trouble, meaning we'll pick her up. And Kugroth onto the back line, and here comes the Murad. He has his Tamaro Turbulence, and he might just be able to use it. No, he isn't. Once again, the Alistar ulti just constantly a pain in the neck for the side of Pixie Dewey. Every single time they try to go in for the finishing blow, Alistar's ulti is always there to kind of stop that progress from Pixie. Two, six, six, and six. It's been a rough game for Alistair right now, but in a one v one, Murad should be able to secure that one with the most damage. It looks like the QoS family will go for the second Dark Slayer of the game. We saw them pick up the first one just now. This time around, with the lanes fully pushed out, they can actually use the great. They might try to steal for the Abyssal Dragon, but the Ross will secure that. It's a massive team fight, but it looks like the Ross is still up and running. They do manage to blow up the Quick Knight. The Wild Princess not being able to catch anyone, and Murat will drop the ultimate. But Alistair's too far away from the rest of the team to help, and they drop like flies. Three men down. They do not even get the Ross, and Alistair has to hit all the way back home. Wants to go for clearing speed, but Murat will be able to catch him out. Does make sure he up just in time. The Ross with a kick, and my Elsie making all the plays needed for the team. And she's definitely on the rampage right now. Alistair using the ultimate right there, but instantly has to break it. Goes out of range. Now Pixie is going to be pushing out both tier 3 towers, they got it, they want security first. It looks like they want to pick up that top tier, or rather that tier 3 tower in the top lane. Get quick knocks position and Orangey trying to go into the back line. Spots up being Mary as well. Hesitates because the rest of Pixie is kind of just disengaged right there. And Orangey nearly had the space needed to go in for the Violet. She was kind of uh, considering it as well, but fortunately didn't really go in. Meaning, let's be careful. Oh, and finally they will remove the Ross, and that is the green light. They can go for the engage right now. Alistair's freed up to just go to the front line. Arthur trying to buy a little bit of time. Kito comes in and that is the bite, but that gives the, open, the opening needed for the Kugov to actually just pick up the Alistair. The burst is just too much for QoS family to handle with Kugov. And he's in staying life still, but a little bit too far ahead. It's a shot from the fountain right there. And that's pretty much going to be GG. Pixis. Proved me wrong coming in really strong and will pick up game one.
so it looks like that is pretty much GG for the first game. Pixis really well done there to pick up game one. It wasn't the easiest game for QS family. I still think they had a really decent draft, but LC pulling out all the stops to crush that game and constantly make it a, a tough time for Tumai to even do anything. The Alice was constantly getting uh, ganked up by LC, just going in with the rise, just blowing up with the 1-2 punch. And that is pretty much it. So congratulations to Pixis. They will get game 1. But this is a best of 3. So hopefully QS family have something better to show for in game 2. We'll go for a short little break. But when we are back, we will bring you game 2 with the QS and Pixis. Alright ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for waiting. We are finally back with game 2 between Pixis and QS family. Obviously in game 1, we saw Pixies had a really good game, you know, Ross ever played by LC, she was insane in that game 1, just commanding the whole tempo of the game, constantly catching on the Alistair, and even at times, like, we saw there was one particular instance where the Alistair was rotating from the mid lane to the bottom lane, and unfortunately, you know, LC just got caught out, I mean, <coughs> we know Orangey was playing the Quick Nug, she tried to find, you know, ways to go in, try to catch out either the Rust or the Violet or maybe even the Murat. But it was just so tough uh, for the side of QoS family to pull off, pull that off because of an exceptional gameplay coming from LC. So, a really well played to Pixies over there. But now coming to game 2, they will be swapping sides. So we will be seeing Pixies play on the blue side where they will have their first pick. So it looks like we're going to have the usual bands coming up on the screen right now. I mean, here Ross is where Bottom getting banned up. We do see Ross as well as Zeke getting banned. So I, I guess Heroes family a little bit of a flashback, <laughs> a bad flashback over there. They just want to remove the Ross, they don't want to deal with it. And for those who are interested to know what's happening in the lower, or rather not the lower, but the other brackets that's happening between Flamingo as well as Talonga, you can head on down to the Vietnam stream to watch that as well. I think they're currently in game one. Uh, they should have their game still going on yet. And uh, I, I I gotta say even if even if Ras wasn't really picked as a counter pick against the uh, Alistair, I think that would have still be ways uh, to go down. Oh, it looks like we're gonna have a little bit of a remake, uh, but that's fine. Uh, I think we'll we'll probably remake the draft. Uh, but that should that should be good. I I don't think that should be an issue. We'll just probably uh try to get the match up we running but yeah let's talk a little bit more about the rise i think uh in comparison is coming to other here i think rush just does uh really well in a lot of cases as long as there's a backline that you really need to catch up i mean you there is the rising uppercut that's also the power switch who has really got so much worse damage and on top of it he doesn't even need mana so that that is kind of the uh the good thing about rush is that he he can perpetually just stay in lane as long as he wants as long as you don't take too much of the damage you can just constantly just use power search to hit those long range damage and it's not like it doesn't pack a punch as well i mean at level one instantly you have 500 damage that's a lot uh even for any other hero to kind of deal with and you also have the rising uppercut that's 480 so he he's the kind of hero that has a lot of damage in one shot and you 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 power all of that together with the explosive ko which is his ultimate then you you get a real a really uh dangerous hero that can just go to backline remove someone get out and you can even save your you can even save your uppercut if you want to. And the good thing is his passive just allows him to get closer to opponents without having to put himself too much at the risk. So that's kind of the advantage that Raz kinda has. But looks like we'll go for a little break once again. We'll probably wait for the new lobby to come up. And once that lobby is up, we will see game two.
So yep, we'll probably go for a short little ads break, but when we are back, we'll bring you game two between Pixies and QoS family. All right, it looks like we are finally back with uh, the draft. Uh, we're gonna see Pixies do the same ban. It's gonna be uh, picking up the Krizik as well as the Yawn. So it looks like Krizik has been let through. Uh, meanwhile, the QoS family side, they ban out the Ross and the Zik, and they're gonna pick up the Violet and the Yena for themselves. All right, so it looks like we finally got all of that sorted out. Let's just take a look at the draft right now. We've got Krizik, Joker, as well as Obsolete. Uh, currently, I'm not sure if they want to really go for Obsolete as early into the draft. But on the other side, we see a Violet as well as Yena getting picked up. So Yena being let through because of the Ross ban. Uh, we talked about the Ross and how good it is. But this time around, it looks like we're going to see a Joker getting picked up. So... I mean, we, we haven't really seen uh, too much of Pixies playing Violet. Uh, it, might be, it might be a pocket pick, something that, you know, uh, they want to catch the opponents off guard with. For now, it looks like the draft will go back onto QoS. Family's hand. And there's a lot of heroes on the table. I mean, Alice is one of them. They can actually just forego to Alice and actually go for... A solid tank as well. And they kind of need something to actually deal with the Joker. So they might want to combine Alice with a really strong mage. So the, the couple of mages that I'm thinking of. Uh, maybe a Delchan, something they can actually catch the backline. I think Alistair would not work as well here. Because if we look at the heroes uh, on the side of Pixis at this point. Like most of the damage dealers that they have. I uh, can kind of just sit at the back. I uh, don't really have to worry too much about Alistair's ulti. So even if Alistair has the ultimate to kind of lock someone down, uh, they don't really have the range needed to actually get get it in, in, in range. So, you know, at this point, you know, the threats that are really towards QS family side, I mean, there's not so much of a threat to pick this draft as of yet, because most of the heroes don't really have to worry about uh, the side of Kyo's family. Maybe a Quick Knight, because the Quick Knight can kind of just jive onto the Krixie, as well as the Joker. Uh, Ras has already been banned out, so they don't have to worry about that as well. So, in terms of drafting-wise, I think... Pixies have picked up a lot better compared to the last game. Not that the last game was weak. I mean, you saw how the draft kind of worked out in the last game. You saw how well LC played that Ross as well. But this time round, you know, picking up the Joker, he's a lot more independent, doesn't have to worry too much. Uh, you know, he can kind of just, you know, use his ultimate and just back off. He has his second skill as well, which is kind of, it's kind of like a melee skill, but you do get the rollback. So that's always nice to have in a MM. I'm excited to see how Pixies will be using the Krizik as well. I really want to see them use the Krizik because, you know, his camouflage is just really annoying to deal with. And on top of it, he has the Grand Gravitational Pool, uh, which is kind of like a really good stun. So I, I kind of want to see that uh, coming from Krizik. The, the annoying thing about Krizik is that he's he has the consumer and it's just annoying, you know, you can't spot him out. He's just able to freely roam the map. He can, he can catch you out as well. So you have to be really, really careful about that. However, it looks like the Murad will get banned on. Same goes for Astrid. We're going to see the Zeo get banned on. So you can see on the side of uh, Pixies, they want to ban a lot of these uh, heroes that have very high bursts. And are able to get a backline, uh, especially that heroes that can capture uh, or rather get onto the Joker. So it looks like they're gonna ban a Quick Knock, like mentioned. So Quick Knock getting taken out, Murad, Russ, Zero, all these heroes with a lot of bursts getting taken out. I mean, Fennec is still on the board, which is something that either of these teams can kind of go for. Although, if 
they do go for uh, Athenic, then that's pretty much a squishy lineup coming up from Pixis. Although they can just focus a lot on burst. That's the the good thing about Pixis draft is that if they pick up, um, if they do decide to go for that Fennec pick as well, they have a lot of burst. Like whoever they just catch on, they can just you know send send a quick as a scouting to. The moment they scout someone, they just burst him down using. Uh, Using all three of the carries, they have the Joker, the Quixie, as well as uh, Fennec, and then you know maybe have a tank to kind of sustain if they really want to go into a team fight. And Lugo is also one of the other forgotten heroes that we have not seen in a very long time. I mean, Tulum makes a lot more sense here, but let's talk a little bit more about uh, Lubu, although he wasn't picked up there. I mean, Lubu, he used to be really strong. I mean, you straight off from level one. Uh, he's a hero that has three hits, and he can kind of do a lot of damage from the get go. Uh, even compared to to Kilgrove, I mean, his regen is just insane because you have the Conqueror. Uh, not only do you have a lot of life steal, but you have a lot of uh, attack damage. So the good thing about Lubu is that he also has resistance. Uh, when it's up to fifty percent resistance for eight seconds, when you know he's using his ultimate. But the good part is. The Red Stalin, you know, the fact that you have 3 hits from level 1 and every single hit is really strong as well. And the good part is when he gets to that level 2, when he has Impel, uh, it, it, his cooldowns decrease every single time he hits the attack. So you can kind of just cast Impel and when when you use your Red Stalin, you also reduce that cooldown. So that's kind of the reason why uh, Lubu was really strong in the past. But with more and more heroes coming up, you know, you see uh, like even Omen. Omen does really well against Lubu as well. Because he can kind of just uh, soak up all the damage coming out from Lubu. Uh, but let's, enough about Lubu. Let's talk about the heroes that have been picked in this game thus far. We're going to see the Narkroft as well as the Krixie getting picked up. So I guess, you know, on the side of... Uh, uh, Pixies, they pick up the Superman, so they want to have a lot of bursts. They, it is a very squishy lineup. That's something that we have to uh, keep in mind is that Pixies are going with a draft that is very, very squishy, but they have a ton of damage right there. So much damage in their lineup. You know, Superman can just go in just with a cold breath uh, or the super breath and just, you know, try to push someone out of the way. And the good part is his passive, right? His passive can just put someone out of position. He can just kind of just push the enemy lines back as well from this uh, squishy team. So I guess LC likes to play a lot of heroes that have a kind of a displacement factor. You know, same goes for the Ras. And uh, this time around, she's playing Superman. And it's not only... It, it, it's not only the... Uh, what do you call that? Uh, it's not only the Kryptonian strength that has the ability to, to kind of slow opponents down. The fact that, you know, he's kind of like a fighter that can just go in and kind of initiate for his opponents. That's something that's really well. And on top of that, he's one of the most mobile heroes as well because of the flight that he has in his kit. So it looks like we're having a extended pause coming out from the side of Pixies. Obviously we're gonna get everything up and running before we do get the game on the way.
Alright, so it looks like we finally have the game underway right now. So we, there we have the scope on the screen coming up. Pixis 1, QS Family 2, as uh, new as of now. Remember, this is the best of three. So whoever, if QS Family loses this game, it's gonna be Pixis that will hit into the grand finals of the Vietnamese qualifiers. A slow start from both sides, no invasion as of yet. However, uh, we do see LC cutting the waves a little bit. Oh, Superman, a little bit of trouble for LC. She tried to play too aggressively, going for the top creep, trying to cut it away from Omen. And the thing about Omen is that he's able to kind of just shut Superman's mobility down right he has the ultimate he has the ability to just uh, hook someone back kind of stop uh LC from trying to use flight and that's gonna be something that LC has to be careful throughout the entire game because Owen is just there to uh, counter uh you know they don't have to worry too much and once again another kill on the top lane Superman going down they really want to make life miserable for LC and if they can do that, that that's gonna be quite a huge problem for the side of Pixis. But now, QS family, they are not joking around. They want to ensure they to get this early game underway, trying to go for the Spirit Sentinel. And now they want to go for more Omen in the front line. Hito, a little bit of trouble. She's dropping it down to a quarter of HP. Now Superman trying to come up from this revenge. But they have the support of the Tula. Comes out from the back line. Tries to bring down Highland. Trinxic nearly going down. And while they're trying their best to get those waves cleared and underway. Alice with the stun. Drops the sunshine down. This is where we most likely will see that first uh, major team fight. We already saw the Pixies going up, so uh, Superman definitely doing a lot better in other lanes because you know up against the Omen, it's gonna be a nightmare. Like I said, you know Omen has the ability to just uh, constantly CC uh, Superman, either using Death's backer or even uh, Death's embrace. So that's gonna be a really bad lane laning phase. Uh, but we kind of missed out that Q down the bottom lane. Uh, looks like we got see Alice getting taken out as well. Meanwhile, looks like they want to go for a little bit of a gang down the middle. Omen, nowhere to be found, but they do not find anyone. That's going to buy a little bit of time for Pixies to actually pick up the first Abyssal Dragon. So finally something going their way. Meanwhile, top lane, Superman dropping really low. Let's see this Tulin try his best or her best to actually just play uh, Sunshine Ring drop down. They want to get this kill onto Physic. But looks like they will not have enough damage. Meanwhile, Superman onto the back line does manage to pick up one more kill onto Renji. And he's trying to push her back and back. But now the Omen will come in. Death's Embrace will get locked down. And they will get the easy kill on Superman. Or maybe just not. Does manage to get the Consumer down. And that is a good skill coming from Harlan to keep her team alive. And now they can actually get one more kill. Keto dropping really low. And that's going to be a double kill coming off the Trixie. And guess what? Superman not looking too bad after all. Elsie, after having that horrendous start, finally coming up. And I guess that lane switch was really beneficial to Superman. I mean, LC, we spoke about how Superman doesn't really work well against Omen because of his skip. Pixies want to work on this momentum right now. They have their goal lead. Even though it's really little, but it's something to speak for. Now, me and the bot lane trying to farm up Orenji though. Trying to secure onto that Spirit Sentinel. 
does manage to secure it. Doesn't even have to use the spike. Heating up. Now they're trying to go engagement down. You got Nakrov coming down to the mid lane. Superman just constantly pushing them back. And that's one more push for the road. They might be able to get two. And that is the Nakrov being able to pick up that double kill. Or Superman and both Nakrov will share one each. And he will get the Abyssal Dragon started on. Avoids the roll. That is well done. Nakrov though trying to save up onto the top lane. Has to be careful about Kyoto's ultimate. Is currently on Kuda, but he doesn't know that Nakrov though. Get a little bit of HP off Kito. And like I said, you know, if you look at uh, Pixel Drop, it is really squishy, but they do have a lot of burst damage. So that is the trait that they are willing to go for. Joker constantly pushing down onto the one line. Pixies one tower down, or the Pixies one tower down at this point, but they are looking really good in terms of damage output. Look at that, the Joker just one ultimate just brings both the allies and Violet down to half HP. And now Superman will catch the allies out, pushes her out of the sunshine. He will get one Q, maybe get a second one. They find the Tula pushes him even further back, and they might be able to get it, but looks like. They might not be able to reshoot me. They will settle for Renji first. And LC now starting to put that Superman to work. But they have to be careful. Omen pushing onto the tower, top tower. Looks like Pixie is going to do the same onto the bot lane. And look at that. Mini's just taking up so, so much damage. And now the Nakarov wants to go in for the finishing blow. Doesn't even take too much of a shot. Superman coming to rescue Yumi. One more shot. Not able to do it. Superman, can he actually secure the kill? Doesn't even need help. And Joker with the ultimate will push him back. One more hit on tower. Yes, they will get it. Joker coming to the rescue of Superman. Ironically. <laughs> and they will get the bottom tower now. To see a little bit of the trouble. Kito. Death Embrace on crew down and he has to support the rest of teammates and it looks like Omo will go down as well. Nakrov and things are starting to get really messy for the side of QRS family. I mean they are getting caught with all these quick rotations coming up from Pixie and that's because the heroes are really really mobile. Not only are they mobile, they have a lot of burst damage. So yes, they might may not be able to uh, sustain in team fights, but at this point in time it doesn't look like they even need to sustain. All they have to do is just blow up their opponents even before the opponents can get to them. Curious family definitely having a hard time to deal with that burst. So Dragon, Superman, Consumer as well, they have no idea what in stock. Looks like they're gonna run into an unfortunate Arangi one more time. And Superman catching out Alice, pushing them back for the second. Look at that, it's another third one. And a fourth time in a row. Violet goes down, Alice goes down. And that is 3 out for the count. Instant TP as well onto the top lane just to prevent them from taking the top tower. I mean, this is the best that Kito can do for now. So look, and he come up just in time, but Super is there as well. He might just want to push out against the lane. LC once again pushing her opponents right back. And Kito one more hit away. But Joker's ultimate will pick her up. Meanwhile, Yumi does manage to get just beneath a tower just in time. But man, LC seeking a lot of revenge on that early game gang from his teammates. Currently 2, 2 and 10. Pixic not doing too bad as well. And has been the unsung warrior in this fight. 0, 0 and 12 as well. 80% kill participation. They get the Dark Slayer. And Mini needs more time. She needs the team to A buy more time before she comes online. Question is, will Pixies allow that? 
We will get one more Q down to the middle and that burst damage is just too much for both the Tulan as well as the Alice to handle. Meanwhile, top lane, Omen wants to go back to his tower but Superman will not allow that. LC pushing away with flight. And they will release the Drake as well. Meanwhile, middle lane, Joker in a little bit of trouble. But they have no trouble with that. They will just allow it. No qualms, no questions asked. Let's just push out the top tower. Let's just take this game by storm. And Orenji trying to buy some time. Trying to make sure that the opponents can't end the game. One more shot. The knockoff will go down. But it doesn't come true. Mini dodging the Joker's ultimate just by a little bit of breath of the hair. And they will get the Drake as well. But this allows Pixies to pick up the middle lane. 11 minutes in. They are 7k go up. Their consumer is gonna spot them out as well. Look at the burst damage that they have on Tula. Instantly goes down. That's a huge source of damage missing for QS family. And it doesn't matter though. They will lock down Keto. No way out for him. And look at LC. Wants to push that. Violet back but takes too much shots from the turret that doesn't matter they still can push this tower if they want to because Joker is still up and running one more hit onto Alice should do the job will get put back by the trick stick as well but a little bit of a greedy play coming in for Pixis and QS family will punish them but the fight isn't over now Liang jumping onto Orangey Flight coming in for Superman as well just to push Orangey back and one more push should be able to do the trick nothing much they could do there one more hit but she gets out just in time. Wow, what a play coming in from LC. Just not enough for that. That's fine because they were just set up for the Blizzard Dragon and Kira's family uncontested so far. On top of it, they've really lost that top tower. I mean, it has been the nightmare of the game coming up from Alice. Uh, 1 6 and 4. You can't really blame her as well. She's one of the squishier heroes. Uh, if, in fact, if you look over to the line of. Um, QS family, they are pretty squishy and now Superman trying to push him back, they will get one more kill into Orenji for the uptime time and now Kito wants to get to Joker but nowhere near, tries to push him up but they know he's pretty much dead, LC making a little bit of a misplay but that, that doesn't matter, Leon goes in for the knockup and LC will now start to push them against the wall. He gets blown up for the rest of the team, are still there to take the fight. And this is a bad, bad mistake coming for Pixies. They lose four members, and the Superman is all by himself. And that's gonna be the rampage top. They get the ace, and not only that, they get a couple of towers in the back. I mean, 20 seconds, they can actually just take up almost all the two towers if they want to. A blue team tower has been destroyed. A blue team tower has been destroyed. A blue team tower has been destroyed. And this is the result of the Greedy Dunes gameplay coming out from QC. They want to go for the Dark Slayer. Knockoff coming in at the right time. Can he actually get Dark Slayer? No, he can't. But Joker will pick up one Q. On to Tulan. Long cooldowns or rather long regens on both sides. Quixie gonna be running onto Orangey as well, the worst person she can run into. The great has been summoned. Goes into the half moon and instantly gets blown up. A blue team tower has been destroyed. back Kito but now Superman will bring Alice into no man's land once again but can they sustain out this fight this is the sustain that they like they only have burst damage yes they can bring one down but Joker will go down as well and what can Nakarov do can they buy enough time Pixie will come out uses the ultimate but there's not enough damage and they will get game two congratulations to QS family a really good comeback this time round completely different compared to game one
So what a game that was coming up for QoS family. I mean, what that was more of a mistake of Epic since they were controlling the entire game, even the top lane as well, and it got a little bit greedy. They wanted to end the game right there, pushing in, tried to go for the omen. Yes, they managed to got him, but after that gang, they should have backed off right there. They separated a little bit too far, you know, LC got away from a team as a teammate, and without the Superman's protection, the rest of the teammates look really squishy, and they have a ton of burst damage, but they lack the sustain as compared to what QS family had on board, and you saw towards the later part, the moment they got their wipe out, they got two base turrets on the middle and bottom lane and that was a really really big blow to the momentum that pixies had and after that they grouped up they took the duck slayer and that just that was the final nail in the coffin and that being said congratulations kos family they will pick up game two but it is a best of three so we will have game three up for you shortly and that will decide the winner of the game will decide who will go into the grand finals we'll go for a short little break but when we are back the final game between pixies and QOS family.